Hello, and welcome to our brief announcement, which is on strong observational refinement and forward simulation. My name is Bridges Dongol, and this is joint work with John Derrick, Simon Doherty, Gerhard Schellhorn, and Heiko Verheim. The context of our work is concurrent objects, where we're not only trying to ensure preservation of safety and liveness properties through refinement, but also security properties. The overview of this talk is as follows. We're interested in the preservation of security properties that can be expressed using the hyperproperties framework described by Clarkson and Schneider. In their 2019 DISC paper, Atiyah and Inea define a notion of refinement called strong observational refinement, which strengthens the traditional notion of refinement so that hyperproperties of abstract systems are preserved as we work towards an implementation. In their paper, they also claim that forward simulation, which is a proof technique for refinement, is both necessary and sufficient for strong observational refinement. It turns out, however, that this claim does not hold when we consider infinite traces and liveness properties. Our two main contributions for our brief announcement are as follows. We provide a counterexample to show that forward simulation is indeed insufficient for preserving all hyperproperties. We also define a new notion that we call progressive forward simulation that does indeed guarantee strong observational refinement. Before getting into the details of strong observational refinement, let's first recap what hyperproperties are as defined by Clarkson and Schneider. As you know, the typical way to describe safety and liveness properties are using the traces of a system. So a trace property is a set of traces. Clarkson and Schneider show that this is insufficient in the context of security, but we're actually interested in comparing different traces of the same system. So they define this notion of a hyperproperty, which are sets of sets of traces. A simple example of a hyperproperty is that of non-interference for systems that distinguish between high and low inputs as well as high and low outputs. The hyperproperty that captures non-interference is the following set of sets of traces. For details on exactly why this captures non-interference, I refer you to the original paper by Clarkson and Schneider. But for our purposes, it's enough to understand that we're interested in the preservation of hyperproperties through refinement. One characteristic of trace properties that you may be aware of is that they can be distinguished between safety and liveness properties. There is in fact a theorem that says every trace property can be expressed as a combination of safety properties and liveness properties. Analogously, in the setting of hyperproperties, we can distinguish between safety hyperproperties and liveness hyperproperties. There's an equivalent theorem here that states that every hyperproperty can be expressed as a combination of hypersafety and hyperliveness properties. The context of our work is that we would like to start with an abstract system that we know satisfies a particular hyperproperty. We would then like to derive a concrete system or an implementation from this abstract system. And what we are looking for are guarantees that the concrete system also satisfies the same hyperproperties guaranteed by the abstract system. We also stipulate that the systems that we're dealing with are a combination of a client program P and some object that it interacts with. We can think of this object as being a library that the client program uses. At the abstract level, we have a client program P interacting with an abstract object O2. Whereas in the concrete implementation, we have the same client program interacting with the concrete instantiation O1 of the abstract object O2. We note here that we're expecting the client and object to be concurrent. Moreover, the traces may be finite if they terminate or infinite. In the context of hyperproperties, we must also define the adversary model that we are working with. Following Atia and Enea, we stick to a very strong adversary model, which was originally described by Asmus in 2003, with the idea that the strong adversary can actually observe the internal states of a system and influence its behavior. In the context of the systems we're considering, we model the strong adversary using a scheduler, which is a function from a sequence of actions to a set of next actions. We assume that the scheduler is able to observe the history of the system thus far, and then restrict the next action that the system can take. In our context, we will consider a particular type of scheduler called a deterministic scheduler. And to define this, we must first distinguish the different types of actions that our client object system can allow. So the alphabet or the actions that our system can take can be split into four disjoint sets. Sigma P, which are the actions of the client program. Sigma O, which are the internal actions of the library. C, which are the actions that call an operation of the library. And R being the actions that return from that library operation. We can now define a notion of a deterministic scheduler, which is a scheduler that for any given trace 
either allows a set of program actions as a next action or produces exactly one next action. In other words, if the next action is an internal action of the object, a call or a return, then the scheduler produces exactly one next action. The idea here is that a deterministic scheduler resolves all of the non-determinism of the object. With these ideas in place, we can now define refinement for hyperproperties. The notion of refinement we would like is observational refinement, because we would like to refine library objects with respect to a client. Following Atiya and Enea, we use the notion of strong observational refinement so that we can take the scheduler into account. We say that a concrete object O1 strongly observationally refines the abstract object O2, if and only if, for every deterministic scheduler S1 that is admitted by the composition P cross O1, where P is a client program, there exists a deterministic scheduler S2 admitted by P cross O2, such that the traces of the composition P cross O1 allowed by the scheduler S1 when restricted to the actions of the client program is equal to the traces of the composition P cross O2 as allowed by the scheduler S2, again when only considering the program actions. And this must hold for all programs P over the alphabet gamma P, where gamma P comprises the internal actions of the program as well as the calls and returns to the client object. Atiyah and Enea show that strong observational refinement is enough to preserve all hyperproperties of the abstract system. Given this notion of strong observational refinement, we would now like to develop a proof technique. And the proof technique we use is the classical one from standard refinement, where we prove the existence of a simulation relation between the concrete implementation and the abstract object. The particular type of simulation we will use is called a forward simulation, which allows one to consider the traces of the two systems from their initial states. Roughly speaking, a forward simulation establishes a relationship between every trace of the concrete program with a trace of the abstract program. The relation R itself is between a concrete state and an abstract state, which must be preserved as the traces of the concrete and abstract evolve. As this diagram shows, the traces of the concrete system may end up with more states because the concrete system is more detailed than the abstract system. We cater for these differences in a proof of forward simulation by allowing the concrete system to stutter. I1 and I2 here are stuttering steps that correspond to taking no step at the abstract level. The idea here is that for every concrete step, we must be able to produce an analogous step of the abstract system if the refinement relation holds between the pre-states, then the refinement relation holds again between the post-states. For stuttering steps, we simply take a step of the concrete system and take no action in the abstract system. Provided that the refinement relation holds prior to taking the step, the refinement relation must hold again after taking the step. You'll see now that I2 and C2 have a similar pattern. The difference here is that C2 is a non-stuttering step with the analogous abstract step A2. Another result that Atiyah and Enea claim in their paper is that whenever there is a forward simulation from some concrete object O1 to some abstract object O2, then O1 strongly observationally refines O2. The paper also provides a result in the other direction, so mainly they claim that forward simulation is both necessary and sufficient to establish strong observational refinement. In our paper, we have discovered that in the setting of infinite traces, which hyperproperties do allow, we run into problems with this result. In particular, we can establish a forward simulation even though there is no strong observational refinement between the concrete and abstract objects. Roughly speaking, the problem arises due to infinite stuttering at the concrete level. So as you can see here, if the concrete system reaches a state where it infinitely stutters with respect to the abstract system, yet maintains the forward simulation relation, we will have a forward simulation between the concrete object and the abstract object. However, we don't have trace equivalence as required by strong observational refinement, because this trace of O1 clearly has no corresponding trace in O2, which produces both A1 and A2. Let's now consider a concrete counterexample to show that this does manifest in real systems. We're going to consider a fetch and increment operation that is implemented using a load link store conditional. For the abstract object O2, we will pick a very natural specification for a fetch and increment that atomically increments the value of the object and returns the previous value. For the concrete implementation, we select the following program. The program synchronizes threads using a load linked store conditional, with the idea being that we first store the current value using a load linked, and provided there's been no interference, using a store conditional, we increment the current value. We then return the old value, n, which was stored previously at line f2. The particular implementation of the load linked store conditional we consider is the obstruction-free design by Luchanko Moyer and Shavit in their 2003 paper. 
The client program is the program P, which uses a shared object X and performs a fetch and increment operation in two different threads. I won't go into the details of this, but you can imagine that it's fairly straightforward to show that there does indeed exist a forward simulation between O1 and O2. Now if we consider the composition of the client program and the abstract object, for any scheduler S, the scheduler must execute both of the fetch and increment operations of the two threads in some order. However, in the concrete implementation, since we use the obstruction-free load link store conditional by Luchanko, Moyer, and Shavit, it's actually possible for the two load link operations to continually interfere with each other. Going back to the program, in the obstruction-free implementation, it's actually possible for a load link in one thread to interfere with the load linked in the other thread, which means that there is a trace in which the store conditionals of both threads continually fail. In other words, the load linked operations of the two threads continually interfere with each other and neither operation makes progress. The simple counterexample shows that we actually don't have preservation of hyperliveness properties, even though there is a forward simulation. In our paper, we provide a solution by defining a new notion of forward simulation, which we call progressive forward simulation. And the idea is that not only do we have a refinement relation between the abstract and concrete objects, but we also have a well-founded ordering that is guaranteed to be reduced by the execution of O1 whenever O1 stutters. This notion of progressive forward simulation clearly will never allow infinite stuttering because the well-founded ordering on the states will guarantee that any stuttering in the concrete system eventually terminates. We then prove a sufficiency theorem, namely that if there is a progressive forward simulation from a concrete object O1 to the abstract object O2, then O1 does strongly observationally refine O2. The disk publication is just a brief announcement, but you can find the full proof in the archive version. We are currently working on the proof in the other direction, namely a proof that progressive forward simulation is actually necessary for strong observational refinement. Thank you for your time.